we're gonna be taking a look at Blackmagic design cameras, and more specifically, how to work with, edit, and color grade Blackmagic raw footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. The first thing I like to show you is how to make your B-Raw footage easier to work with so it has smoother playback. And for that we'll use what's called the Blackmagic Proxy Generator and it's an app that you can download on Mac or PC. Let me show you how it works. Under my apps I have Blackmagic Proxy Generator and the interface is going to look like this. What you want to do is click add and I have under this folder a B-Raw clip that I'm going to open. Under status it's going to say waiting and then what you you want to do from here is just click start. Now what that's going to do is it's going to generate a lower resolution, lower quality video clip that you can use and easily grade with. Your footage you shot will still be there and I can show you once we're in DaVinci Resolve how you can flip that on and off because when you go to color grade the footage you want to turn the proxy generator off so you can see and color grade with the full resolution but when you're editing and moving clips around it's a pain to try to do that with the full file you get out of Blackmagic Raw. A helpful tip that I'd like to share regarding this, say you go out and you shoot a promotional video for a business and maybe you're not editing till the next day. Go to your computer, pull this up and just dump all your footage into this proxy generator and start. So that way the next day when you get to it, all your footage is ready to go. Okay, now that that's done and we have our proxy, we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve and we're going to start working with our footage. So up here, we have this button and we can click the drop down arrow. And this is gonna show us how we'd like to prefer seeing our footage. Do we wanna disable all, all proxies? Do we wanna prefer proxies or prefer camera originals? Just notice that whenever you prefer camera originals, you will probably experience choppy playback. So in the editing stage, I would recommend to uh, prefer proxies so you can get the full 24 frames a second playback. We're gonna stick with prefer camera originals because this video is is going to be mainly focusing on just handling the black magic raw footage and color grading it i'm not going to show you like a full timeline um, and making it easier to work with and just kind of knowing how to color grade it because we have this awesome camera that shoots just awesome cinematic footage but if we don't know how to properly work with it and deal with it in DaVinci Resolve and color grade it, it's kind of all for naught. So we're gonna click on do the color tab. We're gonna get rid of the nodes for a second. Notice down here we have our camera raw settings and let's change this to clip. And this is the first way you can start to edit black magic raw. Um, I haven't changed any of my settings. We're still in 1080. Let's go ahead and change that to Ultra HD. And then let's go to Color Management and you'll see here uh, DaVinci YRGB is selected. Timeline is Rec 709. What we will do though is we're going to change our timeline color space. Uh, we're going to change it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And the reason why we're doing that is DaVinci Wide Gamut is a much bigger color space than Rec. 709, but it's a working color space. And what that means is in DaVinci Resolve, you can work with footage and use colors outside of what you're actually able to see in Rec. 709. So you can have the most latitude to pull down highlights, to raise shadows, to kind of add saturation or whatever you choose to do, contrast ratios, etc. Output color space, we want to have a Rec. 709 setting set because that's what we see in our displays. That's what we see on iPhones and computers is that's like a visible viewing space. So that's the distinction between those two. You have a color space that you can work in and move colors around, but then you have a output color space or delivery color space. That's what viewers see. And here we're gonna choose Rec. 709A. And if you have a Mac display, I noticed choosing Rec. 709A, whenever you export it that way, it looks exactly like what you see in DaVinci Resolve. If you've used DaVinci Resolve and you get a washed out export, this is the reason. I would try that, or that's most likely the reason. We're gonna hit save. And if you'd like to, this is where you can choose, you can do all your grading with the camera raw settings. I typically don't do it. I use color space transforms and LUTs, but you may not have time for all that or want to dive into that and you just want to do something simple. So here we would be doing a process called delogging 
And what that means is rather than using a color space transform, which is a tool inside DaVinci that transforms the image into its color space, like what the, what the camera saw, this would be kind of converting our image to Rec 709 in our own custom way. So let me show an example of that. So in nodes here, there's something called a color space transform. And if I put it on there, and if we choose the camera settings, so, and you can find these settings on the camera, but with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K G2, those settings are gonna be Blackmagic Design Wide Gamut Gen 4 5. And then if we go down here and choose Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5, these are the color spaces the camera is shooting. And so all we're doing with this color space transform is we're transforming what the camera captured into what the display can show. And then we're gonna choose Rec 709. This is our output color space. And then Rec 709, um, well actually, let's just choose Gamma 2.4. And so this is what the camera saw. Obviously it's a little overexposed, which is fine. We can take our exposure down. We can choose to start working from this right here, which is a color space transform. There's even different ways you can do that. And I don't wanna like get like too confuddled with everything right at the beginning, but you can choose to manipulate your raw settings and start from this image, or you can start from this image right here. And you're like, I actually wanna take full control and I don't want anybody else telling me what to do. <laughs> if you're really willing to spend the extra time to do this, it's fine. This will be what's called delogging. If you wanna just start from ground zero and you don't want anybody else telling you what to do, this is kind of what you can do using just the raw settings. You don't get bad results, but you don't really have a good starting point. So what I'd like to do, we're gonna reset this, use this color space transform, and then you can just start from here. This is really helpful if someone is sending you footage to color grade that you didn't shoot yourself. And it's really important to use something like a color space transform or what people may refer to as a conversion LUT, which is a LUT that basically can do the same thing as a color space transform. It's important to do that because especially if you weren't there that day, like say this footage was shot not by me and I got it in and I started trying to color grade it from here, I'm really reaching the dark trying to color grade this. I'm like, well, you know, there's no clouds and you know, she's being front lit. So I'm going in there and I'm adding contrast and um, contrast was about here. See, I'm, I'm taking educated guesses versus if I got this footage and I wanted to make for sure, I'm starting with what the camera saw, what someone else shot with their camera. It's much more accurate to do something like a color space transform. Now the next level of that, we're gonna be taking through two nodes, this is sort of like the next level up on complexity, how to manage your footage. We're getting right now into what's called color management. So let's make two nodes. And instead of outputting this color space to Rec 709 and 2.4, we're gonna take and put it into DaVinci Wide Gamut. As you see, it's gotten all faded, which is fine. Add another color space transform. And we're gonna take that from DaVinci Wide Gamut and the other one, DaVinci Intermediate. And then we're going to select Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. And you'll notice the image is the same as the other one before. The difference is now we're actually working within uh, DaVinci Wide Gamut. As before, with just the one color space transform, we're working within the Blackmagic color space. DaVinci Wide Gamut is a much bigger color space than Blackmagic. So even though it looks the same, anything we do in between these two nodes is done in that much bigger color space. So this gain is gonna act differently than if we were just, if we had this and use it in the Blackmagic color space. We're basically just setting inputs and outputs for DaVinci Resolve. We're saying, hey, this is what camera I saw. I want you to work in this color space. And at the end, I wanna go back into Rec 709. 
So that's a couple ways. The next way I want to show you is a little bit easier. We're going to go into this, uh, click the cog wheel. We're going to change this to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. We're going to click off Automatic Color Management. We're going to go to HDR, HDR DaVinci YGAM Intermediate. We're going to go to Output Color Space, Rec 709A. We're going to hit Save. And you'll notice there, it does everything for us and we don't even we don't even have to put any nodes anywhere. This is a really great and even simpler way to approach using color space transforms for converting your your image you shot with the camera into Rec 709. But the only caveat is as you'll notice we don't get to dictate what nodes are within DaVinci Wide Gamut and which are not. Everything we do in this in this kind of node right here. So if we had a bunch of nodes, everything is done within DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. And if all you do is work within DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, that's fine. Um, but there are some tools that you may like that actually work best with Rec 709. For instance, the Dehancer Pro plugin, it works really well in Rec 709. So if you were to try to use this, you may not get the results that you want. So in that case, you would do the other method. You would take the note after that and say if I wanted to use a plugin in Rec 709, that's where I would put it right there. What I like to do after that is I like to label this one to Rec 709 and label this one uh, to DaVinci Wide Gamut. So you kind of know where your footage is coming in and where it's going out. Then everything in between is you know going to be in DaVinci Wide Gamut and then after anything you want to use in a Rec 709 color space or a different color space. Say if you wanted to transform it to red or, or airy or whatever. This method really is for when you wanna work in a project with multiple camera sources. If you get a bunch of footage and there's Blackmagic RAW and there's RED or Sony S-Log3 and Canon, you know, C-Log2, you would do a setup like this where you're grading all the camera in one color space. You would take this first node right here and say if it was like Sony, you would change the input color space and the input gamma to Sony. Or if it was Canon, you would change it to C-Log2 and um, Canon Cinema Gamut. Put everything in DaVinci White Gamut, grade that, bring it back to Rec 709. So then all your cameras, all your footage is graded in one color space. The next thing I'd like to move into is using LUTs. Matteo Bertoli, he has an awesome YouTube channel. He has um, what he calls buttery LUTs. For those to work, we're gonna keep our color science at YRGB. We're going to change this to scene and then leave that at Rec 709A. And what's cool is he has a LUT that if you would like to not have to use a color space transform and you don't want to mess with raw settings or you do want to mess with raw settings, this is a LUT that you can put on uh, your footage that will kind of convert the LUT that Mateo likes. It's basically doing what a color space transform does, only it's in like a LUT form. And with this is you kind of get varying degrees of how someone likes to convert their footage. And he has um, conversion LUTs at different strengths. Now we have uh, this first one, second one, a third one. And so we want to pop that on. What we can do is we're basically doing what we did with color space transforms, only it's with an OLED. And we can kind of treat it like a color space transform. So that's converting our image from our camera's color space into Rec 709. So what we do then is we want to put nodes before it because again, like I said, that's converting the image to Rec 709. And so we would go in, or we can just use the raw settings. We would take our exposure, kind of go down. And you'll notice this LUT isn't imparting any stylistic choices. It's simply just converting it to Rec 709. I'm gonna label this buttery Rec 709. And then we can kind of make our own adjustments like that. Kind of we added our contrast, kind of like so, our exposure down. We're just kind of editing everything with the, you know, the raw camera controls. And you don't have to use just raw, like I can go in there 
and say I want to do control saturation, but use these knobs right here. So that's uh, another way you can work with your Blackmagic raw footage. Another way I'd like to show you is with um, another set of LUTs, but with these ones, we will change the color science to DaVinci Wire GB Color Managed, and then HDR DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, and then we're gonna change this to Rec 709A. And these LUTs are from Colin Kelly, and the reason why I'm putting the timeline things like that is because that's how he built the LUTs. He built the LUTs to work within these settings. So whenever you buy LUTs off the internet or whether they're from Mateo or they're from Cullen, there's also the Phantom LUTs. You wanna make for sure you're reading the user manual so that you can match your project settings mm -hmm. with the LUTs. And also you wanna take into consideration when you're buying LUTs and you're doing different things, you wanna make for sure it fits nicely into your workflow. I've purchased some things where you kind of have to build a workflow around that. And that's that's something I'm foreshadowing, which is Dehancer Pro. Dehancer Pro is an amazing software plugin, but you do have to put a lot of time and effort into learning that software. But right now, we'll be looking at Cohen Kelly's uh, Voyager Pro Pack LUTs. His LUTs are, are pretty cool. In this Pro Pack LUTs right here, you have an option for tone and an option for palette. And so tone, you can basically mix and match LUTs. And he, and he makes these LUTs all work within this color space. And I don't wanna dive in too much to kind of how they work because I already covered that in another video. But you know, if you haven't seen that, you know, check it out. But this is another way you can build a look. I can go in here and they're almost, it's almost kind of like you're just working with ingredients. My raw settings here, I actually did change exposure down. So I could, kind of do let's this way where I'm just kind of stacking them. We're back in this DaVinci Wire GB color manage and so that means everything we're doing is in that color space and that's fine because it's the biggest color space. But this kind of setup right here is is fine because we're grinning with one camera. Literally, we just have one clip in the timeline. But you may want to look at it a little differently if you're grading, you know, tons of, you know, tons of different camera types. And if you have any questions, I know I covered a lot and I took some more time in this video to kind of slow it down. I'm still kind of figuring out what pace I'd like the video and I kind of thought about it and it's it makes more sense to have a longer, slower video where I'm really deep diving into this sort of stuff is because it's, it's kind of hard to pass on the page when you're trying to figure out something and and you want to make for sure it's right and the video is like nine seconds long. Hopefully this was a more coherent video. Please let me know like how I'm doing. Like is this kind of a better pace video than what I was doing before? I'm trying to make this the best filmmaking channel and I want to provide the best content. There's a lot of information that I've gathered and stockpiled in my brain. I'd like to just be able to share it and provide value uh, but also um, worth your time. So if you could leave a comment down below, leave a like, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.